आउज़बिल्लाशैतरजीम बसमीम स्टूडेंट्स फोर्थ ईयर होप यू आर ऑल फाइन एंड हेल्दी एंड स्ट्रॉग एंड नॉट डिप्रेस्ड और एंशियस इन द फेस ऑफ दिस हॉरेबल पैंडमिक दैट इज़ गोइंग ऑन इन योर कंट्री इन दिस वर्ल्ड विद लॉट ऑफ सफरिंग्स एंड मेजरीज अराउंड यू वेन यू ओपन योर टी वी वेन यू ओपन योर इंटरनेट यू सी सो मैनी न्यूज ऑफ विच आर नॉट सो हैप्पी नाव डेज बट स्टिल आई वुड सजेस्ट यू गाइज टू बी स्पेचुअली स्ट्रॉग इन द फेस ऑफ दिस एपिडेमिक एंड बी ऑप्टोमिस्टिक एंड डू नॉट लेट डिप्रेशन और एंगजाइटी टेक ओवर योर पॉजिटिव एनर्जीज और राइट लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर टू डेज टॉपिक टू डे वील बी कवरिंग इंट्रानेटल केयर इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड ब्रीफली अबाउट द केयर ऑफ अ न्यू बॉर्न चाइल्ड बट एज वी टो आई टोल्ड यू दैट इन मटर्नल चाइल्ड हेल्थ वी आर डीलिंग विद मदर्स एंड चिल्ड्रन साइमिलटेनियसली so uh, during intranatal period we have two things to bother one is in, in the intra and the postnatal period one is uh, the mother and the second um, entity is the newborn child so we discussed the care of newborn child uh, uh, in the last lecture uh, today we will dis- uh, discuss uh, public health aspects of the intranatal care now what should be the objectives of intranatal care uh, now while uh, there is a difference between how uh, the topic of intranatal care is taught by a clinician and how a public health expert talks about it public health experts focuses on the basic aims and objectives which should be ensured to have positive baby uh, uh, to have healthy baby and healthy mother by the end of parturition so for that we just uh, not only need to focus on the clinical aspects we need to focus on the policy uh, strategy uh, strategy and the planning aspect of um, uh, the parturition and specifically today we will be discussing intranatal care now to ensure intranatal care what should be your uh, objectives of this phase of um, uh, uh, the part of maternity cycle the objectives should be that you should be able to ensure thorough asepsis that means that during <coughs> uh, the process of birth there should be minimal chances of getting infected from the environment both for the baby as well as for the mother and then there should be minimum injury to the mother and child means the birth should be very safe and should be under the supervision of trained birth attendants now trained birth attendants can be a gynecologist a woman medical officer or a lady health visitor in lhv that has uh, uh, taken a diploma uh, by working and by getting trained in um, uh, a, a setup in a maternity setup when where there are um, uh, the normal vaginal births, births going on or uh, it can be done by <coughs> community midwives community midwife was also a cadre that was introduced few years back by government of punjab uh where they trained local residents of the communities and villages for um, 1.5 uh, years in government setups where they were posted and trained in um, uh, maternity wards and labor rooms and they were uh, taught uh, how to take care of a laboring woman and how to ensure a uh, safe birth and avoid complications and foresee complications if there are any and refer the mother to the um, setup where these complications can be dealt and then readiness to deal with complications uh, readiness involves both foreseeing 
the complications and if the complications occur uh, we should be um, capable and we should be uh, ready to uh, manage it and for dealing with complications you need to have uh, a medical setup proper medical setup which can allow uh, certain procedures like c section uh, blood transfusion surgery anesthesia etc etc and then uh, we should have to take care of the child this part of taking care of the child has been discussed in my previous lecture in detail now uh, now intranatal care can be uh, ensured through uh, two means one is domiciliary care and the other is institutional care now what is domiciliary care domiciliary care is an important aspect of uh, uh, intranatal care or intrapartum care and this is defined as the care uh, given to the mother who plans to deliver at home under the supervision of trained birth attendant now uh, which mother should ideally choose uh, to be um, uh, to deliver at home the mother that is um, the uh, parturiting woman that is not a primary gaveta means she has already delivered a baby through normal vaginal uncomplicated birth at a, a medical facility under the supervision of trained birth birth attendants uh, the primary gaveta should sure um, uh, come to a medical facility for labor and giving birth while uh, any woman that has uh, a track record of uncomplicated births and uncomplicated pregnancies can choose to deliver at home now uh, uh, these mothers should ideally be um, uh, healthy they should not have any complications throughout um, uh, the current pregnancy Uh, and they should not have any history of uh, medical or obstetric disease as well as complication in her previous um, uh, deliveries her age should be less than 35 and her age should be more than 18 means uh, she should not be more than 35 or old uh, 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 woman or she should not be uh younger than 18 years old because in both these age groups there are more chances of um uh, complications and another aspect is that uh, uh, neither a mother should be a primary gaveta or a grand multi uh, gaveta that is more than uh, five pregnancies because at fifth pregnancy the chances of a complicated birth like um, uh, postpartum hemorrhage uh, increases multifold okay now what are advantages of intranatal care um, uh, at home that is known as domiciliary care that the mother is comfortable uh, she has less chances to acquire infections from surrounding means uh, hospital acquired infections um, uh, cannot be uh, contracted because the mother is at home and the mother is with her children she can uh, look after her children during her um, uh, uh, labor if the labor is long usually it takes 6 to 8 hours uh, in uh, uh, women which are not primary who are not primary gravidas now this is very important aspect even i uh, had experience this thing that when you are um, having uh, you are already having children and you uh, are going to uh, have another baby soon one uh, huge matter of concern for the mother is her uh, already uh, her life children who are already dependent upon her because at that time the woman will be uh not up and about she will have to restrict herself to the bed or a hospital room or a hospital for example so she will not be able to take care of her children and um, uh, as we all know that mother and child is a single unit so if the children are dependent upon the mother they are not very old and they depend upon their mother for like uh, their food their sleep and their clothes changing 
and their uh, diaper changing or their po- they are not potty trained so all these things uh, are a matter of concern a mother has to uh, has some contingency planning in case she goes to hospital for delivering in that case if she is provided domiciliary care at her own home at her own environment she can manage her children by her own self by taking care of her by looking after her with the help of certain assistant for example her own sister mother she does not have to uh, has to leave her house to go to hospital and she will be more comfortable uh, keeping an eye over t- uh, the children while she um, uh, goes through labor and delivers birth and delivers the child now what are the disadvantages this one disadvantage is that the first and the foremost thing is that there is definitely less medical and nursing care uh, a mother who is delivering at home does not definitely gets that um, level of uh, med- medical or obstetric care that is being provided at a uh, healthcare facility so uh, she is at loss um, in this aspect and uh, then the other thing is she doesn't uh, get to have much le- rest because she is at her own home she can see um, her uh, challenges the demanding children around her so she resumes her work earlier as compared to the hospital birth where she has no other thing to do except to take care of her own uh, the child that has been recently delivered and her own self she is restricted to the bed for at least 24 hours post delivery and throughout the process of labor and um, uh, then her na- di- diet can be neglected because she is at home nobody will bother um, taking care of her because she will not be considered um, a patient or a vulnerable person anymore when she is up and about she is taking care of her children so rather she would be bothering uh herself to feed other members of the family like her husband her children or her uh, in-laws etc etc rather than she uh, being the one who deserves most care so it happens in c- certain status of the society all right now uh, uh while the mother uh, plans to uh, give birth uh what should be uh, the target of trained birth attendants who are looking after her uh, during her birth at home uh, what are you going to teach what are the sops that you are going to provide to the uh, community midwives or the lady health visitors or the trained dais or birth attendants who are um, a link between the parturiting woman at home and the healthcare facility so uh, you should be um, uh, the policy that you should be giving is that um, the trained birth attendant should focus on uh, forcing and detecting the danger signs what are danger signs danger signs are those signs which make women vulnerable to morbidity and mortality and does not um, uh, uh, they does not uh, if they uh, these signs are present Uh, they does not promise a very good prognosis of the childbirth now what are these signs that is sluggish or no pains after rupture of membranes this is sl- sluggish not sluggish <laughs> this is um, uh, a spelling mistake and then we have another spelling mistake in the next line sluggish or no pains after rupture of membranes this is one of the danger sign uh the trained birth attendant if he finds um uh, a mother with rupture of membrane and there is a delay uh, in full fledged pain strong pains are not coming pains are sluggish she should immediately defer that uh, parturiting woman to the nearby healthcare facility and then there is no progress despite pain pains are coming pains are strong but you do not find dilatation as um, uh, there should be uh, there is slight difference between primary gravida and uh, um, multi gravida as far as progress of uh, the labor is concerned because dilatation is slow uh, in uh, the primary gravida as compared to the one uh, uh, who have multi- the multiple births beforehand 
सो इट हैज़ बीन सेड दैट अ सन शुड नॉट सेट टॉयस ऑन अ लेबरिंग वुमेन सो इफ दैट हैपन्स द पेन्स आर कमिंग एंड देर इज़ नो डायलिटेशन नो सर्वाइकल डायलिटेशन देर इज़ नो डिसेंट ऑफ द बेबी देन वन शुड थिंक अबाउट ऑब्सट्रक्टेड लेबर एंड शुड रिफर द वुमेन टू द हेल्थ केयर फैसिलिटी बिकॉज देर आर चांसेज ऑफ कॉम्प्लिकेशंस All right, and then if some uh, birth attendant on doing uh, per vaginal examinations during labor finds a prolapsed cord or hand, um, she should immediately refer that woman to the uh, hospital because uh, it is a sign of, or rather, it is not a sign. It in, in its own self is a complication because there can be compression of the cord by the uh, descending head. Uh, which can lead to uh, obstructed blood supply to the fetus and hence uh, fetal distress can occur meconium stained lab- uh, liquor means that uh, the fetus has passed stool uh, intrauterine and the passage of stool intrauterine refers to or hints towards the fetal distress that is going on so if the liquor contains meconium it is stained with liconium meconium it is a danger sign and the woman should be immediately referred to the um, healthcare facility or in case of excessive show because there can be some hemorrhage going on inside there can be some tear etc or there is collapse of the woman a woman gets unconscious she is bp less pulse less in that case you should rush her to the hospital because there might be something which cannot be detected without a proper ultra uh, uh, sonography of uh, that woman or some other sophisticated test so that woman should be uh, immediately referred and then you have if a woman has delivered and she starts having uh, what to call uh primary postpartum hemorrhage uh the, the hemorrhage that occurs within first 6 hours of uh the birth you should and that, uh, any blood loss that is more than 500 ml should be taken as um, uh postpartum hemorrhage and uh, while the um, trained birth attendant tries to move that lady to the hospital she should uh, ensure the first aid that can be provided or any measures that she herself can do to minimize the blood loss at that time should be ensured like that of uterine massage calling for help arranging transport etc etc and then rushing or securing an iv line if you can so that the blood can be transfused as soon as she reaches the hospital and if the placenta is not separated half an hour after uh, the delivery of uh, the fetus uh, the mother should be taken to the healthcare facility because there might be some complications and uh, there might be a need of uh, cesarean section or uh, manual rem- uh, placenta removal if fever is coming fever shows uh, that there is some chorioamnionitis amnionitis um, uh, which is uh infection of uh, chorion and amnion that is attached to the uterine wall uh, now when it happens if there is significant uh, time lapse between rupture of membrane and the birth of the baby then the infection travels up the um, birth canal to the amnion and the chorion and the inflammation starts and fever rises but if this Uh, situation is very alarming it is one of the horrible danger signs because if it uh, 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 sets in it can lead to sepsis septic shock or postpartum hemorrhage of the grade where it definitely endangers a woman's life <clears throat> and then if we have slow fetal heart rate but again uh, this uh, will be difficult to uh, measure in a, a home settings uh, in this case if uh, a, a competent or a trained birth attendant through uh, that uh, uh, sonometer that is um, uh, a manual a manual uh, um, uh, uh, manual device that is used to calculate and listen to fetal heart uh, if she uses that and finds low or irregular fetal heart rate Uh, with uh, multiple decelerations she should uh, take women to the healthcare facility now what are 3d's this is an important aspect 
uh, at what three levels delays can occur and um, uh, our mother uh, does not reach um, uh, does not uh, acquire medical attention uh, timely because time is very important uh, if uh, the timely help is not provided to a laboring woman uh, which requires help she may end up losing her baby or losing her own self uh, to the parturition or the uh, birth uh, uh, process of giving birth so what are three delays three delays are at the level of recognition of problem that there is some danger sign there is um, some complications uh, if that complication is not recognized timely this delay can lead to significant increase in morbidity, morbidity and uh, mortality in uh, the uh, newborn and the uh, birthing woman <clears throat> then the next delay can be uh, the delay to uh, reach hospital or to decide uh, that um, uh, that woman should be taken to the hospital and the third level of delay is after reaching the hospital or the healthcare facility between the uh, the entry to the healthcare facility and the initiation of treatment for example doctor is not available there is already a long queue uh, healthcare facilities are overburdened uh, less staffed uh, most of the time so uh, the woman if she reaches there theater is not empty uh, anesthetist is not available uh, anesthetist is on call the gynecologist who does surgeries is on call she is being called she takes half an hour to one hour to reach hospital so all these things uh, uh, refers to the third D that is delay. Now we in the last lecture we discussed C's uh, and now we are discussing D's. Three C's were clean uh, delivery table, clean cutting of cord and clean hands. And three D's are delays in recognition, delays in reaching health facility and delays in treatment initiation. Now institutional care. What is institutional care? Institutional care is delivery health healthcare setting which is definitely beneficial both for women and the child because uh, he, uh, uh, the child and the mother is constantly under, under high level of medical and nursing supervision. Uh, complications are usually detected at earlier level and managed, managed consequently hence leading to the lower uh, levels of complication in institutional care. But on the other hand, if all mothers wish to come for an institutional delivery, uh, this increases uh, burden at healthcare facilities because definitely the staff and uh, the resources are limited in peripheries, so it gets difficult. So uh, all mothers who are not high risk should be offered uh, and those who are falling in the criteria should be offered domiciliary uh, care in the delivery and then uh, after the baby is born uh, he should be roomed in uh, he should be roomed in what is rooming in what is rooming in Rooming in is to bringing uh, to bring the baby after birth um, to the uh, woman because it leads to better emotional bondage. It leads to uh, early initiation of breastfeeding and then maintenance of breastfeeding. And if the child is um, a little premature, if uh, skin to skin contact is established, then kangaroo mother care uh, is provided. Now, kangaroo mother care can be asked during um, a viva or as an MCQ or as, as a short answer question. What is kangaroo mother care? Kangaroo mother care is usually given or has been devised as a protective strategy in uh, low resourced areas um, when the baby is premature or is small for dates uh, or having low birth weight. Such babies require extra care because um, uh, they should be, um, uh, their body temperature should be managed and their uh, good nutrition should be ensured. 
so we uh, uh, advise kangaroo uh, mother care now kangaroo mother care um, essentially involves uh, four uh, entities the first and the foremost is skin to skin contact between mother and the baby by positioning baby on the mother's chest adequate nutrition through breastfeeding ambulatory care as as a result of earlier start from hospital and support for mother and her family in caring for the baby so these are four important aspects of kangaroo mother care so you should it is given in your park you should uh, they read it from there because those babies who are requiring intensive care in incubators if they can are not, uh, they cannot be provided incubatory care then kangaroo mother approach is the best and the cost effective approach because it ensures maintenance of temperature it ensures adequate nutrition to the baby and the ambulatory uh, aspect is that if the mother is up and about she is doing other work but because the child is all the time on her chest uh, through a belt or some uh, piece of cloth the, then uh, she is constantly in touch with her child and the fourth aspect that is continuous supervision and care provision by healthcare personnel to the mother that is daily at her home during the first week of birth and weekly after that uh, first seven days now as we discussed uh, the difference between uh, domiciliary care and institutional care uh, what uh, properties or what services uh, institutions should have uh, to ensure essential obstetric care uh, that is provided uh, that can be provided to the mother now on the basis of the type of services that they have or they provide we divide uh, health care uh, facilities which are offering um, uh, child birth uh, facility into two types one is basic emonk and then is comprehensive emonk what is emonk emonk is emergency obstetric and um, neonatal emergency obstetric and neonatal care now what are basic and comprehensive care how do they differ basic emergency obstetric and newborn care is uh, critical to reducing maternal and neonatal death this care which can be provided with skilled staff in health care centers large or small includes the capabilities for administering antibiotics utrotonic drugs that is oxytocin and anticonvulsants magnesium sulfate etc they should ensure uh, they can be uh, what you call should be capable of offering manual removal of placenta and the removal of retained products of conception following miscarriage of abortion or assisted uh, vaginal delivery preferably with vacuum extractor and then basic neonatal resuscitation care that we discussed in our last lecture so these 6 plus 1 that is uh, 6 are uh, administration of uh, the parenteral antibiotics administration of uterotonic drugs oxytocin administration of anticonvulsants manual removal of placenta manual removal of rpocs and assisted vaginal delivery through vacuum extractor are uh, various uh, facilities 
in addition to the basic resuscitation care that are the hallmark of basic uh, emong that is emergency obstetric and newborn care now this topic is not given in your park so you should take extra uh, effort on these slides to prepare notes from these slides so that you can reproduce it uh, well in the uh, examination because this question is usually asked and then we have comprehensive emergency and newborn care which includes all the facilities that is provided in basic care in addition to that uh, the facility should also offer cesarean section safe blood transfusion and provision of care of sick and low birth weight newborns including resuscitation to bring services closer to the woman and while uh, the facility uh, should have provision for the c section uh, the integral part uh, will be the provision of uh, or the facility for the provision of anesthesia so c section cannot be performed if anesthesia is not available so both things are lazimo malzum they are interrelated and mutually inclusive so if we say that cesarean section can be performed there that means that anesthesia will be given beforehand and then c section will be uh, done okay so that was emong which has two types basic emong and comprehensive emong now postnatal care of the mother now mother uh, after she delivers the child uh, the focus should be for on the prevention of complications now what kind of complications can uh, develop the first thing is preperial sepsis preperial sepsis preperium is a time period from the delivery till 42 days after birth or termination of pregnancy uh, so uh, if uh, sepsis occurs in this time uh, it can be very dangerous and detrimental to the health of the mother so you should foresee uh, the signs and symptoms and you you should um, uh, effectively manage you should promptly manage it to um, avoid complications or sepsis and um, uh, before that you should try prevented uh, preventing uh, preperial sepsis through uh, following the guidelines to ensure and ensure thorough asepsis as discussed earlier now then there can be thrombophilobitis secondary postpartum hemorrhage and other uh, others like urinary tract infection and if mother is breastfeeding her uh, lactation has started the milk flow is there then uh, she is vulnerable to have mastitis um mastitis uh, again uh, you should be training lady health workers lady health visitors community midwives and all those health Uh, care personnel the field staff the grassroots workers which are actively involved in taking care of mother to uh, foresee this complication of lactation that is mastitis and ex- effectively manage it through some homemade techniques uh, which can be used uh, in the initial phase of mastitis and if not then the mother should be referred to the first level uh, fru that is uh, first referral unit where she can be properly managed for mastitis because mastitis is one complication that rapidly uh, deteriorates and leads to abscess formation and then um, uh, incision drainage has to be done so to avoid that one must uh, rapidly respond uh, in case uh, symptoms or signs start now then uh, rapid restoration of mother to the health uh, to the uh, le- level of health good health uh, through ensure uh, ensuring that she uh, is not anemic or if she had anemia she should be treated likewise so that um, her hb levels rises and she can perform uh, her duties well in the uh, environment of a uh, good hemoglobin level and good level of oxygenation in her um, uh, body so that she can recover from the stresses of childbirth and she can uh, take the stress of lactation when it which itself requires 
um, a healthy mother to ensure uh, good lactation to the child and then we should uh, guide her about taking uh, healthy foods healthy diet that ensured high quality proteins fats and carbohydrates alongside minerals and vitamins so that <clears throat> uh she should remain in well health she um uh, what to call uh, restores her uh, stresses of childbirth and then she should uh, be adequately uh, nourished and um, uh, fed for uh, the process of lactation that is uh, a very important aspect uh, that has great value in the life of the newborn which is dependent on mother for his or her food and the type of nutrition given by the best milk is the best nutrition a newborn can get in this world so if a mother is not well nourished or she is malnourished she will not be able to produce uh, or this or she will not be able to cope of the stress of lactation because lactation in its early days requires energy requires will and both these things are dependent upon mother's own health and though uh, the mother's uh, nutritional status is not um, directly uh, related to the quality of milk she produces but still she needs to have something in her body to feed her child okay and then uh, she should be guided about uh, the um, uh, resumption of her uh, daily activities and the postnatal exercises to uh, strengthen her pelvic floor again Uh, which has been loosened the bones has been loosened you all know that relaxin uh, relaxin hormone is secreted during pregnancy which leads to um uh, lo- loosening of tendons and the ligaments so the woman's body is getting back to her pre uh, pregnancy uh, status so she should be advised about postnatal exercises according to the uh, her health and uh, the conditions she have developed during uh, uh, childbirth for example if she has pelvic floor uh, uh, what you call weakness in the form of um, uh, cystocel or rectocel or uh, uterine prolapse cervical prolapse so all these conditions likewise you have to you know, teach them about kegel exercises etc etc and then you have to psychologically prepare the woman both for uh, breastfeeding and family planning and you should be uh, socially guiding her about uh, her child about other children in her household about other members of the household you should help to rehabilitate that woman in her surroundings in her household again all right and then uh, in the postnatal period you have to uh, ensure that the mother establishes breastfeeding and she is uh, feeding her child herself because this is one most cost effective uh, intervention that leads to healthy children decrease in neonatal and um, uh, infant mortality and malnutrition in the newborns uh and then you have to give health education regarding all these aspects regarding uh, care of the child regarding vaccination status regarding um, family planning etc and then you should advise the woman because she is most uh, what you call um, uh, prepared uh, for family planning at this period if you counsel her for insertion of intrauterine contraceptive device or some uh, skin implants etc for um, uh, contraception she will be happy to take it because uh, she is seeing uh, future challenges future responsibilities in the form of a newborn child and rehabilitation into her environment into her job etc etc so uh, you should utilize this time to guide mother um uh, for the uh, family planning with this dear students we end with our today's lecture uh, which was uh, care of mother during intranatal and postnatal period in our fourth coming lectures we will be discussing uh, growth monitoring uh, low birth weight fa- birth weight and um, mother uh, maternal mortality and infant mortality these are few important topics left for maternal child health care before proceeding towards um, uh, school health services Thank you. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. Uh, keep praying for um, the human kind around. 
uh, keep me remember me in your prayers for the office